I'm Christina Tobin, and you're joining the Free and Equal Network today. Wow, we have, yes, wow. 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 China. We have uh, Mr. Ed Asner here with us today, Emmy Award winning actor of the, you may recognize him from the Mary Tyler Moore show, played uh, Lou Grant. I put on weight. A little bit? Yeah. Four years, uh, president of the Screen Actor Guild. Uh, Ed, please say hi to, our, to everyone hello, today. Hello, hello, hello. Pleasure to be addressing you, talking to you, worshiping you. <laughs> well, Ed and I have been connected through the network, and we really um, learned a lot from each other, I feel. And today I really wanted to focus right in on the rigged electoral system, the one-party state-controlled uh, system, that is, by big money, uh, mm -hmm. some of the power elites, powers to be. It's a big topic right now. We know Donald Trump's come out very big about the rigged system, amongst many others. And uh, Ed, I just want to get your feedback on what you think about the one-party system. I think it sucks, naturally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people in this country, particularly south of the border, I'm, I'm talking about the Mason-Dixon line in this case, uh, how the, the various states are moving heaven and earth to create laws which uh, diminish the power of the people to vote. They're constantly uh, uh, empowering the rural counties, the rural districts, and uh, uh, finding ways to discredit either through voter identification, through uh, uh, abolishing uh, same-day voting, uh, as Election Day, um, in uh, demanding uh, 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 exorbitant uh, fees and and uh, and dates of registration, uh, it's it's all designed to discourage the poor and minorities, and it works. I think they do discourage them, and they create winners in elections that we see a paralyzed Congress operating with. I agree with you. The electoral process as it stands now is rigged. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting you bring up Congress. I mean, when you look at the fact that uh, the approval rating of, of Congress is an all-time low, it definitely is a, an energy, well, a calling. That, the Congress is actually lower than the all-time rating, mm. but go ahead. Mm. And so from restrictive ballot access barriers, it takes a lot of signatures to get on the ballot if you aren't within the two-party system, mm -hmm. to gerrymandering, uh, voting machines. Debolt just recently sold their voting machine to Dominion based in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we have no alternative voting methods in the U.S. The, the whole wasted vote syndrome can be resolved if we had approval voting or instant runoff voting, rate choice voting. Uh, but the two-party system doesn't want that. Uh, to the Electoral College, big topic now, the mm -hmm. popular vote. So... But sadly needed in this country, and I guess we'll never see it, is, is public financing of elections. So that big money can't dominate big contributors. Uh, Koch brothers do a lot of that, influencing of elections and, and candidates. Um, it, uh, it's shameful, uh, it's corrupt, and it would be nice to see the masses of people somehow coalesce to not necessarily agree on a candidate, but to agree on abolishment of the uh, non-democratic processes of voting in this country. So, Ed, given what's going on with the Electoral College, popular vote with Sanders, Trump, and so on, um, would you say that uh, you would be one, a proponent for calling out uh, for stopping the disenfranchisement of voters? Oh, absolutely. Great. Wonderful. I mean, it, it goes on all the time, and, uh, and people get discouraged. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's like uh, they say the unemployment rolls are down. Well, the, the, I, I'm sure they, they may be. But I'm also wondering how many people have just stopped filing for unemployment. Who knows? So moving on to the corruption of, for example, Excuse other me. tools, um, 
beyond the ones I mentioned beforehand, the Commission on Presidential Debates, the CPD, is run by the former chairs of the Democratic and Republican Party. Um, the League of Women Voters retracted their support from the CPD in 1988, stating as perpetuated fraud on the American voters. To corruption in Hollywood, we work very, really closely with, for example, many artists, Immortal Technique, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Chuck D. Uh, if you see his uh, on BBC, the whole story of Public Enemy, he really talks about how uh, they've been blacklisted from the music industry. They do a lot of their their um, work in music overseas. So I've done a lot of research on uh, you and the Hollywood and being blacklisted, uh, the corruption in, in 1982, the sudden cancellation of, of, of Lou Grant, CBS, uh, failed or declined for that matter to renew. The show had the highest ratings and um, your position says according uh, to Wiki, <laughs> but I'd like to hear from you, is that um, your political views were the actual root cause for the show's cancellation. Could you elaborate on that? <laughs> yeah. Briefly. Elaboration will take a long time. Briefly. <laughs> uh, no, I suffered blacklisting and uh, I know of two instances where my uh, uh, I was deemed politically incorrect and uh, not entitled to the job or jobs, I should say. Uh, and uh, all I can say is that Knowing of those two instances, which are dead right and proven, it's like the peak of, peak of an iceberg. Um, the, the mass of the berg is below the water, so the mass of, of my uh, blacklisting is below the water as well. But I was quoted by a man who uh, was doing penance by hiring me about a, a television, a radio interview I gave in, in Washington, D.C. at this time, which I said that even uh, even uh, good liberals participate in the blacklisting, if necessary, because we deal with selling the product in this country, be it a documentary or be it uh, a drama or a comedy. And though the director and the producer may be so-called liberals, uh, if they're trying to sell the product, they don't want to staff it with people who are suspected of being communists or, or terrorists or whatever the hell they call them. So uh, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll cancel out an actor not, not on the grounds that he's too liberal or he's too outspoken. They'll cancel him out on the grounds that personal habits. Uh, he's too bald, he's too fat, he's too old, he's this, he's too that. And they relieve their conscience that way. But in, in that way, a blacklist works because the political spectrum will keep them out while they're trying to sell the product. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing in greater detail about you being blacklisted from Hollywood. Uh, we're going to be joining uh, together to mo as moderators at Freedom Fest, mm -hmm. Planet Hollywood, July 15th. The founder, Mark Skousen, we had dinner with him and his wife, Joanne, last night. Yeah, atrocious people. <laughs> they were... Uh, now I'm kidding. I know. He told she me after. A, she was a doll face. They're a sweetheart. And he was a clever, wonderful guy. Yeah, they're really good people. And um, so we'll be having a panel there talking about the rigged electoral system and really, again, calling out for the stopping of disenfranchisement of voters. Um, but also, um, you'll be at Anthem Festival speaking about being blacklisted in, in Hollywood in greater detail. So check that out at Freedom Fest, freedomfest.com. Uh, so to really wrap up, um, you know, I guess really on Freedom Fest, I wanted to know why you agreed to be a part of that panel. You asked me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm your slave. <laughs> but at the same time, it seemed to be a panel that was designed to try to prod thinking, to prod, to prod activism, and above all, to air uh, the truth about voting, about freedom restrictions in this country. And we are confronted with it all over. I, uh, you read that email I gave you. I did in detail. You bring it back? Yes. Good. 
but from that we can gather that it didn't matter who was elected president, mm -hmm. that one will follow in the footsteps of the other and uh, compound the misery, be it immigration, be it uh, prison sentences. Uh, we have more criminals, so-called criminals. A man whose third offense was being caught with marijuana, serving a life sentence because it's his third rap. What, I mean, what kind of nonsense is this? We have far more prisoners than any other country in the world. We are far more uh, confining. And m m most people are for victimless offenses. It's become a Puritan country with a vengeance. And that article said 5%. We have 5% of the world population, I believe. I just read it yesterday, but yet we imprison 25%. Mm. So, you know, to really uh, wrap up the interview, um, every problem, it seems, flaws, uh, comes from the flaws. Excuse me. Every problem we have from the TPP to the NSA to the Patriot Act war prison system um, derives from the two-party system. I mean, the judicial system's flawed because the two-party system, they appoint the people, judicial system, and well, so one, on. One bright note was in today's paper, and that's the, the uh, governor of, uh, what the hell is it? Is it North Carolina? Uh, Terry McAuliffe hmm. uh, of Virginia, I think, restored the voting rights of like 200,000 uh, cons gave them back their voting rights. 200,000 people, and they restored their voting rights. Because most of those people are victimless crimes. Mm. Very true, and you are a truth seeker. You uh, showed up on your own at our United We Stand Fest last September. Joanne uh -huh. Skousen even said that at Freedom Fest, you're a truth seeker, which is why you'll be a part of Freedom Fest, reaching across the political spectrum, how we need to come together and focus on the bigger issues that unite us rather than uh, with the powers to be, two-party system, and so on, the tools that are used to intentionally divide us. So uh, I wholeheartedly don't have to answer now, but I invite you uh, to be a part of our stage of the United We Stand Fest this October 25th at University of Colorado Boulder. Mm. I'd love for you to be a part of it, and I'll send you more information on that. And uh, did you have any final words for the people out there? Well, I admire you enormously as I became your prisoner, as you know. And uh, I, I think the idea of Freedom Fest and instilling independent thoughts for freedom in the general public out there, you people out there, and enlisting your aid and your support is so important because it's not coming from the top and rarely will it come from the top. So I, I call upon you to listen to Christina, to uh, be at Freedom Fest, and be a part of the movement. And thank you very much for your time today, Mr. Asner. And Ed, you call me Ed. Ed. Or Cuddles, whichever. <laughs> Some more so voices and more choices. Oh, China's back. Hello, sweetie. More voices and more choices. Thank you for joining us on the Free and Equal Network today. Have a beautiful day.